Hi and welcome to yet another exciting episode of The Digest. My name is Justin. Now, have you ever heard of coffins using pole bearers to lynch people believed to be killers through witchcraft? Is it true that through these practices, the deceased can identify those responsible for their deaths? Well, Diamond TV staffer Bruce Marley visited Chikankata, Neganega and Mazaboka districts following the death and damage of property as a result of such rites. In this documentary, dubbed The Flying Coffins, the lynching tool in Southern Province, the truth is unveiled. In the southern province of Zambia, the practice in which poor bearers carrying a coffin are targeting other community members and made accusations of witchcraft is a matter of growing concern. I embarked on a journey to understand this practice and the extent to which it is wreaking havoc in Chikankata. Neganega and Mazabuka districts. In this part of the country, coffins carried by local residents are becoming a gruesome tool used to lynch people believed to be killers through witchcraft. Believers say this right allows the deceased to identify those responsible for their death. In a space of one month, two people in different instances have been attacked and property damaged in Chief Naluyama's area. This village, some 50 kilometers away from Mazaboka Central Business District, is a share of his past. Property damaged and the occupants scattered. Over 40 people lived at this village, which is lying destroyed. The damage was caused by a neighboring community amid accusations of witchcraft. The target was the head of this house, who was accused of being a wizard and caused the death of another community member. Luckily, he managed to run away before he was attacked. But the property was extensively damaged. Livestock, food, nothing was spared and all the family members who are seated right behind me scampered for their lives at that time they have come back just to check at what used to be their cherished home but they are in their need of help all our properties were damaged chickens houses motorbike genset ducks, toilets, our grain stock, nothing has been spared. We have no clothes, our children have nothing to wear. We are seeking help. What happened is that a community member, Evans, died his relatives consulted a witch doctor who advised them to put charms in the coffin. When poor bearers carried the coffin, it refused to be buried. They claimed a force overpowered them and directed the poor bearers to our home. This made everyone come to a conclusion that Mr. Large Mutelo, my father, is the person behind the death. 
the whole village descended on our home and caused all this damage. One of the three wives to the runaway large mutero is left with nothing apart from the clothes on her body. I didn't know anything at all. A lot of things were damaged. 30 bags of soya beans, 10 bags of groundnuts, 4 mattresses. I had plates. We had a lot of household goods in the bedroom. I am not happy. It hurts. We are approaching the rainy season. We are buying all our food because our grain was burnt. I don't know what I can do. I need help. No food, no clothes, no beddings, motorbikes, everything was damaged. As if the damage to the property was not enough, the rival family further dumped their deceased corpse in this house. The body stayed in this house for a couple of days before police forcibly retrieved it and deposited it into the morgue at the nearest hospital some 40 kilometers away. Soon after the police left, the irate residents bent down the house where the coffin had been kept and later vented their anger on the Ganega police post and attacked the two officers on duty. The structure behind me is what used to be the police post servicing this community but it was demolished by the community who fought back police officers who had been deployed to restore order and sanity. The nearest police station is about 30 kilometers away from here and that is in Mazabuka. Some members of the community are concerned. When police retrieved the body that had been abandoned in the accused house, the deceased family was angered. They mobilized and stormed this police post. They fought battles with police and caused all this damage. The local traditional leader, Chief Nalwama, is a sad man. The happenings here are strange. We are very much concerned. The, we are not happy with what is happening. People should not take the law into their own hands. They must also listen to what we are saying. And we are very much concerned. It is really bad and those they have taken the law into their own hands. They are supposed to, to work with the police, leaders, the local leadership, and the and with the end body, they must also find out, ask questions why something has happened in that way. We are, not, we are, we are really, really concerned. We are not happy. Mm. But this is not an isolated case. In the next district of Chikankata, an 80-year-old man was brutally beaten and bent to death after poor bearers carrying a coffin ready for burial pointed him as the killer. Police were overpowered as they could not stop the people from burning the accused.
The happenings are a matter of worry to government. My next stop is the office of Mazabuka District Commissioner Oliver Malambo. Welcome, sir. Thank you. This is Mazabuka, the city is Thank you so much. I've seen people being traumatized. Some even, one of them bent to death. Others being chased away from their homes on allegation that they do practice witchcraft. It's like we are getting back to the 18th century where people lived in such a way. And like this time around, it is really disheartening to experience this. And this government, we are very, very much concerned. We shall not rest until this is brought to an end using our law enforcers because no one is above the law. Without any compromise, this one should be brought to an end. The measures we are putting in place, one, is to ensure that all the perpetrators of this type of act are brought to book by our law enforcers. All those who participated in the burning of that home, killing of all livestock in that home, talk of ducks, chickens, everything, they must be brought to book. And to that effect, already 15 of them have been picked. They are in police custody. He is of a strong belief that these ceremonies are often ways to settle scores between local residents. Such things are not happening for the first time to start alleging that this person has been bewitched by this one. It has been there. Just go and follow it up. So even for those people, the poor, the poor bearers, who say they are being directed by the, the coffin, that could not be true. That could not be true. It could have been better if the witch finders can advance in their technology of witchcraft or witch finding to a level whereby the coffin, without being carried by anybody, is able to move on its own, and people just follow. And even then, that practice should not be done here in Mazabuka. We wouldn't allow such a thing to happen, because it will divide the families, it will divide the communities, and it will retard the development. Yet as new donor administration, we are here for development. Zambia is a Christian nation, as such, the church in the area cannot watch as superstition is taking a toll on this community. We totally condemn because innocent people are being killed without proper evidence. So as a church, we are saying, if you are not sure of what you are talking about, or you suspect somebody, better you report that person to authorities, and then they are able to take law and follow procedures. Because if we are going to just uh, wake up and simply say, this person is suspect, we start beating and killing people, we'll end up killing innocent people. As a church, we totally condemn that. Especially being a Christian nation, I don't think if such things are supposed to be happening. This bloody tradition is called Chikondo in parts of Zambia. Coffin bearers who are supposed to carry the casket to the cemetery instead suddenly takes off in pursuit for those responsible for the death. It is important to mention that coffin bearers often take traditional medicines that may have the same effects as a very strong drug. Their drugged state could explain the dramatic outpourings of emotions. But does the law allow one to call another a witch? According to the Witchcraft Act, whoever names or indicates or accuses or threatens to accuse any person of being a wizard or a witch shall be liable upon conviction of a fine or imprisonment with or without hard labor for any term not exceeding one year or both. The Witchcraft Act further states that any chief or headman who directly or indirectly permits, promotes, encourages or facilitates the commissioning of any act punishable by this act 
or who knowing of such act or intended act does not forthwith report the same matter to police, he shall be liable upon conviction to a fine or to imprisonment with or without hard labor. Yet the practice is wreaking havoc here and the elderly people are living in fear that they may be the next target. Ray Hamonga is a police spokesperson. We have the Witchcraft Act which prohibits anybody naming someone to be a witch. Now, as regards to the, the famous tradition called the Chikondo, where you see people moving around, though people say the coffin is flying. We have not seen a coffin flying on its own. It's actually being moved by persons to a particular place. Now, we as police have had experiences where people are saying that this coffin is moving. Maybe if I want to be very practical, the case of Mazapuka where in Neganega, where the Nchikakata district of Neganega, so where the, 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 the people were alleging that this coffin was moving. When we went there as police, we were able to pick that coffin and take it all the way up to, to, to Mazapuka Motor Hospital. It never moved in an opposite direction. Now, we want just to appeal to the uh, brothers and sisters that are in the habit of naming persons bewitched, that it's a very serious offense under our, and our, our laws of Zambia, in particular the Witchcraft Act, which uh, prohibits anybody naming someone to be a witch. So if you name someone to be a witch, somebody comes to complain to the police, you can be arrested actually for naming someone to be a witch. And actually it carries a, a, quite a, 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 a stiff punishment of you can be sentenced to prison for up to a, a year with, with or with, 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 without hard labor and even a, a fine of 1,500 penalties which translates with 450 kwacha. Or you can actually be sentenced to both 450 kwacha and also a one-year jail sentence. So suffice to state that we have persons that have been apprehended and are appearing for the courts of law. But you just want to remind other persons that could want also, maybe want to commit the same offense that naming somebody which is such an offense under our laws of Zambia. The fact that coffins do not move on their own unless being carried by poor bearers leaves more suspicion that people have a hand in the whole bizarre practice. And besides, when law enforcement agencies move in to retrieve the coffin, it suddenly obeys, further casting doubt behind the practice, leaving a strong belief that these ceremonies are indeed merely used to settle scores between community members. Surprisingly, the same coffin that controlled the poor bearers and refused to be buried didn't resist the hand of the law when the police went to pick it up. Maybe the charms don't work on police officers, or maybe these are rights practiced to stigmatize against the aged. Ours is to tell it as it is and urge the community to work hand in hand with the authorities to prohibit crimes in all aspects. Give us your feedback via email documentaries at diamondtvzambia.com or send us your contributions via our Facebook page where we're streaming live, which is Diamond TV Zambia. <laughs>